And when this place is on, it's like no place in the world. You can live your whole life and never see this. Seven o'clock in the morning, we're here in Montauk, New York. It's a little misty, a little windy, but we're ready to hey. fish. Are you ready to see some stuff you never saw before? <laughs> I am. Okay. Well, I can guarantee you're going to do that, and some of it might even include some fish. Oh, it's going to be a great day on the water. <laughs> right there. That right there might be, that's something special. That might be Butterfinger. With the fog. You know, it's going to be a little challenge. We are fishing birds a little bit. The best part of the morning heading out of here is, you know, that anticipation of, and no place that I've ever traveled in the world has matched this place here, ever. We kept talking about the bass blitz. I said, you've got to see this bass blitz. And so we're like, all right. If they do what they've been doing, is they stack up shoulder to shoulder and they just charge with their mouths open. It's, it's a once in a lifetime sight for a lot of people. They're busting right up here in the front. First thing I notice is there are just a number of boats around and everybody just seems to be waiting for something to happen. All of a sudden he goes, yeah, it's gonna happen right over here. These fish are all stacked up in here. They just went down, but What's happening is a wall of fish. There's so many fish that it's four to 10 feet deep and they can't go down because there's too many fish underneath them. And the water starts getting dark and the next thing I know, this water is churning. And I'm not talking like a little thing here, I'm talking thousands of fish just churning this water, the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Never seen anything like it before. And they're just slicing and cutting in the water and everybody just pounces. People are trying to get their lures in there, and I, I'm at this point I'm throwing the same thing, a gulp, gulp worm on a jig head, and I and I fire it in there, and I feel a tick, and I set the hook, and fish on. And now I'm onto a big striper, and now I got to get this striper out of this group of fish. Oh, look at this! Nice bass. Oh, look at that. Now the, the other rule is that your first striper you got to kiss it. All right, absolutely. First rule, first striper. You oh. gotta catch that baby, huh? I didn't Look say to that. use tongue. What? Hey, I'm from Minnesota. This oh. is what happens. <laughs> Look at this beautiful. Now you see this little bass. sea lice here. Yeah, yeah. So he just came in from the ocean. These fish are migrating from up as far as Maine all the way down in North Carolina. They're gonna winter there. Nice. The last time they estimated <laughs> to stop, 26 million fish. Now it's dwindled tremendously since yeah, then, yeah. but you're talking yeah. about a large amount of of fish that are migrating down this path here. <laughs> All right. Nice. Captain Frank, baby. Look at the tail sticking up. Now that's because there's so many fish underneath them that they can't go down. Look out there. There's got to be thousands of fish out in that pod right now. It's amazing. Unbelievable. So much fun to just watch this happen. And as quick as they came up and just were swirling and slicing in the water, bam, as quick, they were just gone moving off somewhere else. Captain Frank said there are just thousands of them just stacked up and they just get pushed up to the top. Never in my life, any body of water I've been on have I seen anything like that. Oh, oh, there oh is another yeah. beautiful <laughs> Montauk striper. For people that are really passionate about fishing, that's what it's about. That moment when it just, everything just gels and it just, you know, if there was a sound effect, it would be like zoop, right to that spot. Now obviously the fishing in Montauk is great, but it also has incredible shore fishing. Guys are literally on rocks, in the water, and on cliffs. It's incredible to see, and they're catching fish. This is classic shoreline surf fishing. See all these guys stand on these boulders, and even though we're out pretty far, we're only about 
60, 80 feet from their cast. All I saw, lines of guys on rocks, on shore, with these big surf casting rods, casting out to the edge of the water near where we were, pulling in fish. So they weren't even on boats, and that's how great the fishing is here. People that didn't even have access to a boat or didn't fish on a boat, they're, they're, they're shore fishermen, wanted to come here and get in on the fishing here because it's that great. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. By Triley, Angler's Trust Berkeley Triley, Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. And by Abu Garcia for life. The first thing you notice is the Montauk Point Lighthouse and the cool scenery where you're at. After you take that in, it's all about what they call the bass blitz. They're busting right up here in the front. You can live your whole life and never see this. Thousands of stripers in one spot, and the ones you see on the surface are just the top of the ball of fish that goes to the bottom, all feeding on bait fish. I had two stripers nice. to the boat, but let me tell you, it's like a drug. Nice when you job, see something dude. like this, you just can't stop. Nice job. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Woo. Dude. Oh. Again. Listen, I, striper number three. Look I know at that. RG's are nice to catch. I but. know, but these babies fight, and they are a lot of fun, especially in the middle of that bass blitz. And once the blitz ended, we went off for a little lunch. And with an Italian like Frank, <laughs> that's a special deal in itself. We'll toast a little super side. Right. So great fishing, great fun, and great food and all before lunchtime. So I'm set, a great morning, seeing something I've never imagined seeing, and a great Italian feast. A great day, right? Oh, not so fast. Montauk is also a great fishery for false albies. Kind of like Bonita tuna. So come tight right away. If you, you just quit, give it action in the school, yeah. if they're really, you know, right. crisscross and feeding. Right. If they're just charging, slicing, then just try and get it in there and give it action in front of them. And then you're gonna have to sometimes go really fast, way faster than you think okay. that you would ever reel to okay. catch a fish. Okay. Nice, Johnny! There you go, baby! Nice! Just keep reeling as fast as you can. Don't try and, you know, set him. See how fast, oh look at that line. Look, look at the that. water. Holy cow. He is just stripping line and running. <laughs> that is nice. That is fun. This is fun right here. No large mouth bass fights like that, no, huh? No, no, not hardly. Nothing against a large mouth bass. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? It's no a respect, friendlier fish. You know it's what a mean? friendlier fish. Nice. And a tail grab. Oh. Hey. Woo! Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh. oh, yeah. Look at that. Alby, right here in Montauk, New York. Now that fish fought. You saw it stripping, stripping line on that drag going crazy. This was a different experience, Captain Frank, I'll tell you. They started looking a little bit like the bass blitzes. Look at these fish raging in here. We had them breaking on the left side, breaking on the right side, breaking right in front of the boat. You could look anywhere and cast, and you'd be right on Alvin's. Fish on. Nice. Right here in Montauk. Look at the colors on that. Just gorgeous. There were birds everywhere coming in, and they were just hitting, hitting, hitting. Captain Frank and I were getting doubles. Oh, and there we go. That's the oh, double. There it is the double. The double. Nice. It is a double. Nice. Come on, if you get another one, is that a triple? It is a triple. If I get another one. And that is what we call teaching the bass fishermen how to fish. What? When many people think of New York, the first thought that they have is, of course, the city. Times Square, the concrete jungle, people everywhere you go. But New York is actually a very underrated fishery. I'm Tyler Capella, and this is the North American Fisherman Clubhouse. 
trying to hook up on these huge stripers up there in Montauk, many are throwing topwater plugs into the center of the action. But Captain Frank Crescitelli takes a different approach. The fish are feeding on tiny bay anchovies, so you'd think you'd want to throw something small. But the fish are actually hitting these gulp sinking minnows hooked just like a regular worm. It's the texture and the scent of the gulp that's working on a fishery where it really should not. Just another example of how experimenting on the water can lead to success. The North American Fishing Club is designed by anglers for anglers. If you fish, this is the place to be. Members of the North American Fishing Club can field test gear through our new Stuff Stuff program and get access to exclusive deals. Now there is a free and easy way to jump on board. Just log on to fishingclub.com slash free magazine and sign up for your free subscription to the online edition of North American Fisherman Magazine. The North American Fishing Club, for anglers, by anglers. North American Fisherman is offering you a chance to fish with our guys. Wow, what a fish. Hey, I'm Eric Cotty with North American Fisherman. Do you want to come up here and fish with me? No, no, no. Hold on one second there. I'm Captain Tyler Capella. If you actually want to catch some trophy fish, you got to come down to sunny Florida and fish with me. How about a huge smoker kingfish like this monster? You can sign up at North American Fisherman's Facebook page, or you can go to fishingclub.com to sign up for a contest to fish with myself or Tyler Capella. Plus, everything is included. Hotels, flights, and a chance to see this. Hey, it's up to you. All you have to do is enter. Go to fishingclub.com or like us on Facebook for your chance to win. Coming up, what's lurking beneath the surface that threatens to destroy the water you fish? Find out on Silent Invaders, up next. catch a fish today, you're going to have to practically hit them on the head with the lure. That's because at the bottom of this lake is a thick forest of Eurasian water milfoil, one of many foreign species that are invading North American lakes and rivers. This is Christmas Lake in Shorewood, Minnesota. An invader that has not yet infested these waters is the zebra mussel, and the homeowners here hope to keep it that way. And the only way we think that it makes any practical sense to do that uh, is with 100% inspection of the boats coming in. That was Joe Schneider in 2011. Back then, he and other homeowners were in the middle of a long, hard battle with local and state governments to come up with a boat inspection plan for this lake. As a result of their persistence, today, no boat gets on or off Christmas Lake without first being examined by a DNR-trained inspector. You park, the inspector comes out, asks, asks you a couple questions, sometimes where you live, Last time your boat was in the water, where is in the water? And then they pretty much just check it for seaweed and zebra mussels. And so it's not just a matter of uh, protecting a lake from zebra mussels, and if you lose that battle, you're done, you might as well hang it up. Because the next ones that are coming are quagga mussels, and they're worse than zebra mussels, and rusty crayfish, and spiny water fleas, and, and it just keeps going. Which is why in 2012, the Minnesota State Legislature gave local units of government the authority to fund inspectors at boat ramps. So the homeowners here partner with a local unit of government, the Minnehaha Watershed District, to pay for inspectors at their boat launch. We kicked in 10,000 and they, they are paying like 36 to 38 thousand dollars for these boat inspectors this year. And it doesn't stop there. The city of Shorewood has continued its leadership in this area by enacting an ordinance that makes it a misdemeanor to refuse an inspection and launch here at Christmas Lake. Uh, it's punishable by a $1,000 fine. So that adds teeth to, to the state law. That's a $500 state fine. So will boat inspectors actually prevent zebra mussels from entering a lake? Some anglers are skeptical. She did a good job. But she can't open the motor up, she can't look in the channels of the, the tubes in the trailer. You know, you just, you can't get it done. Which is why, no matter what efforts are put into place, prevention always leads right back to the public who use this natural resource. Remember, clean, drain, and dry is our best defense in this daily battle with the silent invaders. North American Fisherman's Field Test, powered by Stuff Stuff. Everything you see here has been tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. 
If you want the latest in new gear, this is information you can try. Up first, Smart Shield was created by fishermen for fishermen. Tested and proven to be safe for marine life, it also won't affect the integrity of your fishing line, which makes it unlike any other. Club member Kevin Larson said he recently used a Smart Shield combo pack on a trip to Canada. He said it worked better than anything he's ever used before. Next is Berkeley's Blaze Orange Fireline Fuse Line, giving anglers a trusted line they can see. It's optimized for spinning reels, however, it's microfused for strength while remaining ultra sensitive. Club member Bradley Davison said he really likes the Blaze Orange color because it makes tracking easier when trolled. To learn more about these products or to have your gear field tested, join me at fishingclub.com. Field test powered by Stuff. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Quebec, providing emotions since 1534. Berkeley Gulf, alive. Looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. And by Hobie Fishing, powered by Mirage Drive. Up next, Not Wars. And we finish up the day on the water. I'm hooked up. They strong or what? They are amazingly strong. You put us on more fish than I may have caught all tournament season. Really? And that's sad to say, but unfortunately true. <laughs> this is North American Fisherman. Welcome to Knot Wars. Now last week we crowned the Line to Lure champion, which was the Palomar Knot. Now this week we get to start a whole new competition with Line to Line Knots. Now this is still going to be Knot Wars Light because we're using Light Line all from Berkeley. We're using a 6 pound Fire Line as our main line and a 6 pound 100% fluorocarbon and 8 pound Trilene XT as our leader material. Now our first two knots in competition this week are going to be the Surgeon Knot and the Leader Knot. So let's show you how to tie these knots to get us started. First, the leader knot. As with all line-to-line -line knots, you run the two tag ends parallel. Bring your main line back toward the middle, and this is the tricky part. Wrap it around the doubled lines three times. Then insert the tag end through the middle of the loops and tighten the knot just enough that it doesn't slip. Now repeat the process using the tag end of the leader material. Moisten before drawing both knots together and drawing them tight. So there's the leader knot. Now the leader knot's not an easy knot to tie, but keep practicing and you'll get it. So now let's show you how to tie the surgeon knot. Start with both lines parallel. Instead of making two individual knots, we're gonna make one big knot using both lines. Form a half circle with the doubled lines and bring the leader material and the tag end of the main line through twice. The toughest part about tying the surgeon knot is drawing it tight. Use all four lines to pull it down evenly and slowly and make sure you use a lot of lubrication. So there's the surgeon knot. Now an easier knot to tie, but can it hold up against the leader knot? Here we are at the Berkeley Knot Wars machine. We've got both of our knots ready to go. The surgeon knot here on the right and the leader knot here on the left. Which one is gonna come out on top? There you have it. The surgeon knot broke first. The leader knot, still hanging on tight. So with that lighter line, the leader knot is the knot to go with. It's a tougher knot to tie, but I think it's gonna be worth your time to learn how to tie it because it is the stronger knot. Now next week, the leader knot is gonna go on to face its competitor, the blood knot. And trust me, there will be blood. Now to learn how to tie either one of these knots, just head on over to our website, fishingclub.com, or better yet, Download the Knot Wars app on your smartphone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends with a broken knot. Montauk, New York is a cool little town in the north edge of Long Island. It's as far as you can go north and looks a little touristy, but up here, it's all about the fishing. Look at this, look at how amazing this is. This is the Bass Blitz. We're thrown right into the middle of these fish and they're just stacked up in there and that's when they're pounding these baits. We went out in the morning and nailed the Bass Blitz, then spent the afternoon chasing birds and false albacore with Frank Crescitelli. I'm hooked up. 
they strong or what? They are amazingly strong. You've put us on more fish than I may have caught all tournament season. Really? And that's sad to say, but unfortunately true. <laughs> in the tough salt water conditions here in New York, here's what we're using today. From Abu Garcia, the Revo Inshore 40 spinning reel spooled up with nanofill line. And to match it, the volatile rod from Abu Garcia. Now this is a 7.6 medium fast rod. And the reason we need that is because we're looking for a really light bite on some of the fish we're targeting today. And we need that backbone to get them into the boat. And the bait we're using today, Berkeley Gulp. Three things we love about Berkeley Gulp, scent, action, and feel. The fish grab it and they hang on. And that means more fish in the boat. I don't know what they put in this stuff, but I think chocolate's involved. As soon as that lure hit the water, he just slammed it. With these albies, you just hook up and hang on. One question for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Am I putting you on enough fish? <laughs> oh my God, you are putting me on more than enough fish. Okay, so now if I come bass fishing with you, I'll give you, you just have to catch me one tenth of these fish. All right, you know what? I, I might, I'm pretty sure I can do that. Okay. I think I can do that. Okay, because we're up to about 30. I know, I know. Whew. I may have to stock a lake in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hooked up. It was fast and furious, like we were moving and on the boat, just going side to side. Cast here, Ooh, cast there. One. Bam, we got a fish on. Now we're fighting that fish, and it just was non-stop energy the whole time. Montauk, that's all I can say. And Captain Frank. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, nice. That's how we do in New York. That's right. <laughs>